Hey everybody. So in this video, I want to dive specifically into the question of whether or not AI models actually learn or whether or not they memorize information. I understand this is a sensitive topic overall, because I, I see a lot of debate on it overall, right? And it's it can be an emotional topic uh, overall, I've found. But within this, I like to stick very strictly to the research within these things and then just look at it very specifically from a uh, research and physics standpoint overall. Uh, and then so with that, I have a paper that we can ground this discussion in, which is called General Agents Need Real World Models. And, and it's put out by Google DeepMind and it's published on June 16th, 2025. The bottom line that this research paper proves and outlines is is that uh, the models learn and that they learn a world model uh, and that's essentially uh, how they operate and that world model is uh, all of the data that they're, they're uh, trained on right uh, and then that becomes their world overall uh, and that is what they learn off of and it's a learning process um, that occurs within that and then so they break this down via a few different theorems, essentially two different theorems uh, that they lay out within this research paper to prove out both of the things that I just mentioned. Um, and then you can, I'll leave a link to the paper here so you can read through them. Um, so here's theorem one, uh, which essentially denotes, and it says that essentially this is a, a controlled Markov process and it's a controlled Markov process or CMT is a Markov decision process with a specific Without a specific reward function or discount factor, it's defined by the tuple, where the S is the state space, A is the action space, and P, this equation, is the transition function. So within that, essentially, what they're showing is, is that the model creates a world model uh, within its uh, environment, um, and then that's essentially how it goes off of and operates. And then they have their theorem 2 that they uh, list out here as well. Uh, there we go, maybe. Uh, it's, uh, this, it's quite lengthy as far as the uh, math for the theorem here. Uh, as you can see, here we go, theorem two. Um, so proof, we will pr prove this by contradiction, determining partial information of the environment trans transition function that is sufficient to construct an optimal myopic agent and showing that this partial information is insufficient to bound the transition pro probabilities. The trivial bound is tight. Hence, there can exist no procedure that bounds the transition probabilities given this partial information and so no procedure that does so given the optimal myopic policy. Uh, Essentially, what theorem two proves is it's uh, like, so theorem two proves that the models create a world model. Theorem two proves that there's no way that we'll get to like, um, probably like, like, a, like a, a full AGI, um, AGI in the terms of like, uh, where people think of it, where it would be able to solve anything, right? Uh, essentially, what this uh theorem proofs is is that like getting to that like getting to a a model that could generalize to anything would be harder than teaching the model everything about the world <laughs> like like uh it's uh, like if we teach the model everything about the world uh we get almost that same result uh and then uh getting the model to generalize to everything <laughs> is uh essentially impossible because it would have to have a world model based off of everything and the problem with that is is that there's problems that we can't solve <laughs> within our world models right and then so if we can't solve them then the model has an incomplete uh view of that environment and then therefore based off of these theories can't fully generalize out right uh and then like that generalizability uh, is kind of the like i think a root of this like a lot of people that's where their knock comes in on this right they assume that these models let's uh, like i like to put it like this if if generalizability is a scale let's say it's zero to 100 uh, a lot of people like to put ai at a zero but ai is not a zero right on that scale AI is maybe like a five uh but also too it's important to note that humans aren't a 100 on that scale right like uh, people over inflate humans on that scale and, and under inflate ai on that scale and uh what i've seen in my general experiences within that 
Let me just give you a broad example of that, right? Like the uh, broad example is is that like uh, people knock the models for like uh, their chess playing abilities, etc. Like if if uh, you were placed in front of a chess board, you had never seen chess in your life. How would you perform on that, right? Like would you would you perform adequately at that game your very first time playing it? Uh, say without ge- even being given instructions. If you're given instructions, you're going to do a little bit better than you would if you were given no instructions within that, right? Uh, and we can see that there's uh, some level of differentiation there. It would be the same thing for these models, <laughs> that that exact same thing and that exact same process, right? Uh, if the models have zero exposure to something, uh, they're not going to generalize past that overall but like uh what we've seen and what this paper illustrates and and especially what like google DeepMind has illustrated throughout these things is that you can take for example a concept like starcraft right which is like uh i would consider starcraft like a very human oriented game like those types of games uh they require a lot of strategy uh and like um human level perception and knowledge uh like uh, logic thinking reasoning uh, within that, right? But uh, so I can train a uh, LLM model or an AI model very specifically on StarCraft and then like have it uh, play and just not, not give it the rules, not program anything into it, just have it play the game, understand the game, generalize its ability to play that game. And then from there, it can generalize its ability and play that game better than any human in existence. Like that's just so. Uh, it's not going to uh, generalize from there and be able to play other games. And I think that's where the, the um, like people, that's where the knock for a lot of people come in, right? Like, so I teach it and it becomes a world class StarCraft player. It's not going to all of a sudden become, become a world class Dota player or a world class League of Legends player. In fact, it'll be like, it'll be back to zero basically uh, when it comes to those games. Whereas if I took like the top human player in the world and, and Starcraft and I put them in those two aforementioned games, I would assume that they would at least perform like above the standard average, right? Because just a lot of those skills would transfer over. Whereas it's like that skill transfer doesn't apply uh, in the same way for these models. And then why is that? It beca- it's because of their uh, more limited uh, world model um, that they develop within that, right? They're essentially, they, they create and they develop a world model around StarCraft and, and how to play StarCraft. And that becomes essentially their uh, overall world model within that. They don't know anything outside of that, right? Like your world model when you play StarCraft and you get good at StarCraft is, is that you've played Mario and every other, like every other game that has been out like for years and years and years, right? And, and so you, again, generalize that experience via your world model uh, into that equation. Whereas these models are doing the same thing, it's just that their world model is smaller um, in this instance. And uh, I think like another uh, thing to kind of just uh, get to within this, like I, I like a lot of people, I think they're, they're stuck on that these models are just like a pure memorization models and they can't uh, generalize our reason in any way whatsoever, right? So to me, the reason why I don't ask that question, I haven't asked that question of myself for a few years now is uh, there's a, uh, something that's like um, one of the like, kind of the very first big things that I, I developed within the AI space. It's called PFAF, the probabilistic fractal activation function. Uh, and then uh, it's interesting to me because all, like uh, coming full circle within all of that, like the reasoning now I understand 100% the reason why it works, right? When I, when I created it, uh, it just so happened that it uh, ended up being very efficient, right? I created it actually like for this very question and around this issue. Uh, and then so essentially my logic was I'm going to like if uh, I'm going to create a bunch and a series of mathematical equations and and essentially I'm going to create math for AI models as I understood it at the time. And then it turns out like my my underlying uh, assumptions regarding the mathematics behind it were actually like, very spot on with what the models are doing. And essentially I wanted to give them a way to uh, use math probabilistically. My logic was was that they're utilizing math, but they're not utilizing formalistic math. Uh, and that like I wanted to give them kind of like a more formalized roadmap that they could use within that and that they could use that to 
update their own internal world model, essentially, right? That's like literally what all of it breaks down to and what all of it does when you look at uh, the equations, how it works out, et cetera. Uh, and then so my logic was very simple, right? If I train this model on this data set and it does absolutely nothing, the model's just memorizing the data set, right? Because it's, it's, uh, it's just garbage math equations and it's not actual math because it's uh, essentially I'm just giving the model a, a math model to use, right? Like here's a framework for uh, a, a model that does probabilistic math that doesn't know actual math. <laughs> That's essentially what the data set is. And then so if the model were just memorizing that data set, it wouldn't do anything. But over and over and over again, what's been proven out now is, is that like you can literally increase GSM 8K scores by call it like six to eight uh, percent for a general model just by giving it that particular data set. And then so the only way that that could happen is if the model's generalizing something from that data set, right? And then so it's not that level of generalization that people want. Again, like it's not going to jump AI from a five to a 25 on the scale, like surpass surpassing humans, right? Will we ever get to uh, surpassing humans on that scale? I don't know. <laughs> like, I, But to me, the broader question within that is, is like, how much of a limitation is that within the status quo? Like, I don't like, uh, like, uh, a lot of the like doomers miss that part of the equation, right? Going back up to, to what I said earlier, which is a 100% true statement, it's already been done by Google, I could right now train a model that would beat any, like on any video game in existence, literally, uh, and it would beat any human on that particular video game. And then I could do that for a lot of different things that are in existence in the world. And I would just need a model that could do that. But then I could also couple that model with another model that could do something else super, it's for, at a superhuman level. And I could, let's say, couple four or five of those models together. Uh, and then that's pretty generalizable overall, right? For all intents and purposes, it's generalizable enough. It gets the job done. So like, uh, to me, it's like the, the semantics of this argument tend to like, um, matter less and less overall, like kind of in, in, in the real world is uh, how I frame these things overall. Uh, and it's like really to me overall, just like kind of semantic arguments that, um, don't, really weigh in, in this equation overall, right? Uh, and I guess the last thing that I will say on this is so that, of course, there are like disagreeers um, of this world model, right? Like uh, probably the, the biggest um, person that would dis like a uh, prominent person that disagrees with all of this overall is Jan LeCun. Uh, Jan LeCun like is very prominent and doesn't think that the world, that the models create an internal world model. Within that though, I'll say like, so Within the last two to three months, there's been a lot of, of a, pl a plethora of research that has come in and, and a, like just a overwhelming amount of research around reinforcement learning and all of these things, right? That essentially the models are creating uh, an internal world model uh, that's based off of a, a geometry that the models kind of operate and invent themselves in a way. Uh, and it's all based off of the geometry of the gradients. And, and we're kind of mapping all of that out now, right? And then so for the last few months, like the, I, I would say, like just calling it out, like I haven't heard a, a peep from Jan LeCun or anyone on in that camp on these particular topics. Like it's, 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 so the bot, like we did, like for a long time, we didn't know like the inner workings of these models, right? It's, it's been like, that's been a true statement for a long time. And a lot of people like to spout that. And then more and more, that's less true. Like, uh, to me, we know the inner workings of these models at this point, like 95%. And it's exactly what I'm laying out to you here. Uh, which is very different than next token prediction, right? <laughs> which is very specifically why it took so long for it to be proven out to this point. There's been a lot of people talking and, and myself included saying these things for a few years now, but it's been, it's taken us a few years to get to the academic point. Like, okay, here's, it's actually proven out. 
here's where we're at, here's all the logic behind it, here's all of the things to disprove all the naysayers behind it. And that's kind of where we're at within this, right? And then so, I mean, just the, the bottom line to me very simplistically is, is that like uh, the camp that these models aren't reasoning, aren't learning, are only memorizing, et cetera, um, is exceedingly small, non-existent in all of the upper spaces that currently exist, period, uh, et cetera, right? And it's, I, I, it's important to know, and I'll just put this distinction here, here, none of this at all relates to consciousness in any way whatsoever, right? So uh, there's a very clear distinction within this between uh, reasoning, logic, and consciousness. Uh, are these models conscious? No. Do I know what consciousness is? No. I don't know anything about consciousness whatsoever, right? But I like uh, I can like the I can determine that the models don't have enough of an internal model to have a static self within the, this world, and that the world this world model that they create. Uh, the thing is, is that they don't have a central anchor, right? Like you, me, whoever prompts the model, that becomes the central anchor for this model. And that's kind of how it navigates this world model in this universe. Uh, and then for those reasons, like, um, I don't think that there would be any way for the model to, to um, attain or, or be labeled uh, conscious in any way whatsoever under their current dynamics, forms, etc. specifically because of that <laughs> overall, right? Because there's no anchor point of an I, uh, and no stable I, uh, and then also there's no stable state across like uh, time uh, within the models overall. Those would be the, the two big things. Uh, if you put those into the model, would it become conscious? I don't know. Like I, I, It would be a coin flip, I guess. Uh, I would probably actually bet against it but I don't know. <laughs> like uh, that would just be my my prediction overall within that, right? And so I just making that very clear within this that this uh, whole entire discussion within this and and framing within it, it's very distinct between uh, learning, reasoning, and like uh, consciousness and and that whole debate. Like they're two very different topics within this. Um, and then so I'll leave a link to this research paper here. General agents need world models. And if you like this type of content overall, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.